Exploring ISF Rules for Temporary Exports Welcome back to our video series on Customs Brokerage. Today, we'll be discussing how the Importer Security Filing ISF, program addresses goods that are temporarily exported for educational purposes or training programs. Before we delve into the topic, let's briefly recap what the ISF program is all about. The ISF program is a crucial component of U.S. Customs and Border Protection's CBP, effort to enhance supply chain security. Its primary purpose is to collect and analyze advanced cargo information, enabling CBP to identify high-risk shipments and prevent any potential security threats. When it comes to temporarily exporting goods for educational purposes or training programs, the ISF program does provide certain exemptions. These exemptions are put in place to facilitate the movement of educational materials and equipment while ensuring security requirements are met. To qualify for the temporary exportation exemption under the ISF program, the goods must meet specific criteria. First and foremost, the goods must be temporary exports with the intent to return to the United States within three years. These exports can involve items such as training equipment, scientific instruments, or educational materials. Now, let's talk about the filing procedures for temporary exports under the ISF program. Importers or their appointed agents are required to submit an ISF for these shipments at least 24 hours prior to loading the goods onto the vessel that will transport them out of the United States. The ISF must contain accurate and detailed information about the goods, including their harmonized system, HS, codes, packaging, quantity, and description. It's important to note that an ISF filing remains valid for the entire duration of the temporary export. However, if there are any changes or updates to the shipment information after the initial filing, importers must ensure that the ISF is updated accordingly. Failure to do so can lead to penalties and delays in the clearance process. When dealing with temporary exports for educational purposes, it can be beneficial to work with a customs broker. These professionals have extensive knowledge of customs regulations, including the ISF program, and can help importers navigate the complexities of the process. They can ensure that the necessary documentation is accurate, complete, and submitted within the required time frame. Lastly, it's essential to differentiate the temporary exportation exemption for educational purposes from duty-free entry. While the ISF program exempts these goods from security filing requirements, it does not automatically qualify them for duty-free entry upon re-importation. Importers should consult with a customs broker to determine the appropriate customs procedures and any potential duty implications. That wraps up our discussion on how the ISF program addresses goods that are temporarily exported for educational purposes or training programs. We hope you found this information helpful in understanding the requirements and considerations associated with such shipments. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos on customs brokerage and international trade. Stay tuned for our upcoming videos. Disclaimer note below. Happy importing and see you next time.